flowed really well. Hey guys, this is Brendan Josh from Idaho Prepared. Today we're going to talk about a bug out plan and uh, try to get your guys' wheels spinning when it comes to preparedness and what preparedness means for you. Um, just to touch base on, on what I mean by all this is, you know, what's going to cause a bug out situation for you? What, what is, where is your alarm? Where is your red flag? Um, <clears throat> like, uh, you know, if the power goes out, are you going to grab your bags and go? Or are you going to wait and see if your neighbor's power is out too? Or if your city or your state's power is out? I mean, what, what is your trigger, um, for lack of a better term? Check um, the breakers before you just start grabbing your stuff. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's what we mean. You know, do you have a plan in place to, um, be able to quickly investigate what's happened and where we're at? Or, um, do you have the supplies to, if you see guys falling out of airplanes, paratrooping in as a foreign invasion, um, are you gonna, do you have things ready to go right now? Um, for me personally, I know how long it takes me to get all my things, my bare minimum, into my vehicle and get ready to go. And that time limit is 17 minutes. Um, I know how long it takes me to get above the interstate where I live um, into safer ground. That's 12 minutes. I know how long it takes me to get to my primary bug out location um, so I can assess the situation. That's 43 minutes. Um, I know how long it takes me to get to my final destination where I plan to long-term survive. That's three hours. Um, do you know these things? Do you know how long it takes you to get from work to your house or from your kid's school uh, to, to your work or to your house? Um, all these things play a major factor. They truly do. And, and a lot of times, you know, situation dependent, you know, is what's going to happen. You know, there's situations where obviously it's not going to be the most appropriate option for you to just bug out. Right. Um, in a situation like that, let's say, you know, the power does go out. Are you prepared not only to take care of your family, but have you evaluated your neighborhood? Where I live, it's you drive in, you circle around. So I can easily say, do I have enough stuff <coughs> that I can make it a vested interest for everybody else to protect my property? Do I have stuff that I can barter with them? Make it to where they're not coming to try right, and take right. stuff from me. So those are all things to take into consideration. Carrington event, right? Which is a natural EMP or a man-made EMP. You know, I work in downtown Boise. It takes me 45 minutes to get home in my truck. Imagine you know, walking that. Exactly. And I have, I have three young kids, as I've stated in previous videos. So as a parent, you have to prepare for things like, if that is the situation, how long would it take me to get to my kids? Do I have a contingency plan in case my, I can't get to my kids right, right away? Right. Do I have somebody in place who will get my kids and take them to a safe, designated place that we've agreed upon till I get there? Right. Can I trust that person to wait the allotted amount of time instead of saying, you know what, they're gone, let's, let's just move on. Exactly. So these are all things that you have to take into consideration. And, and the point of this video is to really get your wheels spinning. Well, and, and like my situation, when I go to work, <clears throat> I work three hours away, four hours away. So it's, it's, much, it's, it's kind of the same lines. You know, my fiance knows who she needs to get in contact mm -hmm. with, where she needs to go, what she needs to take with her. Um, she knows everything that she needs to know if I'm not here. Um, we plan on bugging out no matter what because of where we live. We live in town in a city where there's 82,000 people within 10 mm -hmm. miles in every direction. Um, if you live on a farm that's 30, 40 miles out of town, bugging out's probably not even in your realm of possibility. Um, if you live in a downtown apartment, that's probably your only possibility. Right. So keep that stuff in mind when you're building a plan as well. Um, where, where do you live? Do you live, you know, back in Kentucky before I moved here, all my gear was forest green because that's what blended. Mm -hmm. um, here in southern Idaho, uh, multi-cam is what blends now. So now I'm in the process of replacing all my woodland camo with uh, multi-cam. So keep that stuff in mind. Um, your vehicle. When, if it's not an EMP and you have the ability to take your vehicle, do you always keep it above half a tank of gas? How many miles does it take before your tank is empty? Um, what's the capabilities of your vehicle? Your Honda Civic isn't going to go off road like right. my F two fifty. You know, it's it's just you have to think about these things and prepare for them. Are you planning on leaving on horseback? Do you have horses? Um, what does your situation benefit? Uh, what benefits come to you from your situation? Um, versus, you know, what would just be overkill, for lack of a better term. Right. Um, not everybody needs a, a, a bug out trailer full of supplies. Not everybody right. needs 10,000 gallons of water on the property. Me personally, I have 100,000 gallons of water storage that, that I carry in the form of a water filter. 
I have an endless supply of food um, in the form of hunting and trapping skills and, and fishing skills. Um, and, you know, what, what are you preparing? How, what kind of time limit have you limited yourself to for those people who um, think they're only going to bug out for two weeks? Right. Um, are you planning on going longer than two weeks? What happens if society collapses in general? A Carrington event could very well do that. Mm -hmm. um, it could set us back to the Stone Age like that. Do you have a seed vault? I do. Um, do you have long-term food prep? Do you have those skills that I was talking about? Do you have literature in case you don't possess those that's, skills now? That's exactly it. And a lot of people, when they think of preparing, they prep. They're like, you know what? I saw some YouTube videos. Right. Josh and Brent <clears throat> at Idaho Prepared said, this is the gun to get, so that's what I got. Right. They said this knife. And look, tools are great. They're going to be your your best friend or the biggest piece of garbage you've gotten right. if you don't prepare yourself mentally. And that's the thing, really. You know, a lot of people don't take into consideration. They say, I watched a YouTube video on starting a fire. Absolutely. Have you done it? And one example of that can be, you know, with my bow. I have mm -hmm. a compound bow. Um, I got this thing because I wanted to be able to hunt if I don't have bullets. Um, mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is that compound bow will shatter um, even a hardwood arrow. Um, so yes, I can make my own arrows, my own arrowheads, my own fletching, and what have you. But I don't have a bow that can shoot it now. So now I'm in the process of getting into traditional archery mm -hmm. because of that knowledge that I gained. I'm prepared to make that switch, that transition to better my situation. Ultimately, it boils down to just making sure that you have your checklist. And and I think of prepping as as like the food pyramid. And you have to think of you know if I bug in, what do I need? If I bug out, what do I need? What kind of uh, temperature am I going to face? Right. You know, what am I going to potentially run into? And the more you start getting <clears> those rules spinning, I'm telling you, you'll, it'll, it won't stop. Because <laughs> we'll never be done preparing. No, That's no, you won't. sort of boils down to. But you always want to make sure that you're making that transition to having that self-sufficiency. Because that's a big part that comes with prepping, in my opinion. Absolutely. You, be, you learn to become self-sufficient. You learn to do certain things such as living off the land or, or making sure that you've got chickens now. Or it's something as simple as knowing what you can mm -hmm. eat in the woods and what you can't eat. Exactly. I mean, there's there's so much knowledge out there to be gained. And, and you know, when it comes to things like that, that's something that uh, we can't teach you. Right. But those are things that you have to go out and you have to learn yourself. I can show you books on these videos, but only you can go out and read mm -hmm. them. Um, only you can figure out how you're going to take that knowledge with you, whether it be coming back for it later or taking it with you when you leave or reading it so you have it in your brain. Um, you know, unfortunately, in an event like an EMP, a Kindle is not going to really be useful. So, right. you know, having all those online books and things like that, that's, that's, that's useless in my opinion. So really keep that in mind, guys. You need, to, you need to think about this not so much in a physical aspect, but as a mental aspect as mm -hmm. well. Prepare yourself mentally um, in, the, in the realm of not just being able to handle the hardships of living off the grid or, you know, doing things without power. But think about it in the aspect of that you're, it's a secondary education right. for you. Uh, you're going to know how, even if you don't need to. And apply it. And even if it's right. in small doses, you know, as you as we went through his bug out in our bug out video, uh, you'll notice a lot of the stuff he had was out and it was used. And the reason that is, is because... You, like goes back to education, knowing right. how to do those, you know, specific skills. So make sure that you're also testing those. You know, you've seen the riot mass video I made showing, you know, where I got pepper sprayed, was able to breathe fine. Well, that's all good and great that you saw how to do it. Go out and try it. It's actually real right. simple. I'll tell you that right now. But you know, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna provide you that education right. to further help you along. Uh, with your self-preparedness, and we look for, forward to learning from a lot of you as well. Because really, the, the best way that I can put that into an analogy is that I can hand you a math book, mm -hmm. but if you never do a math problem, you'll never know how to do it. Right. So you know, <clears throat> when you get these fire starters, start a fire with them. Well, it's it's just like firearms training. Right. You know, when you go through it, you know it's it's all good and dandy to uh, point your pistol down at the target, pull the trigger. Can you do it under stress? Can you do it? And that's can you, do, why you, need can you reload your weapon? Can you move while you fire? Can you? There's just so many layers to this. It it, it really is an onion yeah. when it comes to preparing. Um, there's there's multiple levels to it, and and like you said, guys, networking is huge. Yeah. We, we have a very strong network of um, people who are very prepared in our area, and those are the people we're going to bring on 
uh, to show you guys some of the medical things, some of the communications things. You'll be you'll see a lot of firearms things from me. Comms um, is huge. Here. It is. It really is. It's a yeah. big deal. If you can't communicate with other elements of your plan, what good is that plan? So right. keep that stuff in mind, guys. And uh, you know we'll try to do our best to to bring you guys as much information as we can. If you'd like to see us do anything, talk about anything, if there's aspects that we haven't touched on, please. You know, get get in touch with us. Leave comments, like, subscribe. Uh, you know, spread this around and try to see, try to get as much input as we can uh, from as much people as, as we can. That, that's how we all learn. Yep, that's right. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good day.